This PowerPoint describes the procedures for making adjustments to the net position accounts in the proprietary funds if necessary at the time of closing. You should recall that net position in the proprietary funds is divided into three accounts, net investment in capital assets, restricted net position, and unrestricted net position. Net investment in capital assets is equal to the book value of the capital assets on the balance sheet, so net of depreciation, less the book value of long-term debt on the balance sheet, but only the long-term debt that was issued for capital purposes. Restricted net position may be divided into one or more accounts. The most typical ones that you will see on a balance sheet are restricted for debt service and restricted for capital projects. And finally, the balance of the net position is recorded as unrestricted. You may also recall that in some older financial statements, uh, these accounts were called the net asset accounts. Net position was referred to as net assets, um, but the accounting issues are the same. It was just a change in terminology. For the proprietary things, of proprietary funds, three things have to happen at closing to establish the correct balance in the net position accounts. First, we close all of the temporary or income statement accounts, revenues, expenses, etc., to net position unrestricted. Then, we adjust the balance in the net investment and capital assets account to reflect any changes in the book value of the capital assets or the book value of long term debt that occurred during the accounting period. Finally, we adjust the balance in net position restricted to reflect any changes in the amount of restricted resources that might have occurred during the accounting period. Remember that restrictions are always opposed by outside parties. One example would be restrictions imposed by governments or foundations providing grants. Another example would be restrictions created in a covenant with bondholders. This process of adjusting is the net position accounts is very similar to what we saw in the governmental funds when we looked at the adjustments that had to be made to the fund balance accounts in the general fund at the time of closing. When we do make the adjustments to net investment and capital assets and restricted net position, these adjustments are always offset with a balancing entry to net position unrestricted. So if we increase net investment and in capital assets, we will decrease net position unrestricted. So total net position always remains unchanged following these adjustments. Regarding net investment and in capital assets, since net investment and in capital assets is equal to the book value of the capital assets less the book value of the long-term debt, the events that can change the balance in the net investment and in capital assets include the purchase or construction of additional capital assets. This makes the balance go up. The sale or disposal of capital assets. This would make the balance go down. Depreciation of capital assets. That makes the balance go down because it reduces the book value of the capital assets. The issuance of long-term debt for the acquisition or capital or construction of capital assets will make the balance in the account go down, while the payment of principal on debt that was originally issued for capital purposes will make the balance go up. So we have to go back and look at all of the events that might have involved these actions to determine if there is a change in net investment in capital assets and how much that change should be. So let's look at an example. We'll look at an enterprise fund. Uh, this could be a water enterprise, a sewer enterprise, electric enterprise. Um, remember, enterprise funds are one of the two types of proprietary funds. The other is internal service funds. So at the beginning of the year, our enterprise funds balance sheet looks like this. You'll see that net position is divided into net investment and capital assets. In this case, you can see that it is equal to the book value of our capital assets, $3 million gross plus the cumulative depreciation of $1 million, um, leads us with a net value of $2 million for our capital assets, less the value of our long-term debt, $750,000, which in this case was all issued for capital purposes. 
uh, leaves us with net investment and capital assets of a million two hundred and fifty thousand. Restricted debt service and restricted for debt service of seventy five thousand in this case corresponds to the seventy five thousand in restricted investments that you see up top in the assets section. In this case, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between our restricted assets and our restricted net position. That's not always the case, but in this simple example, that's the case. And then the balance of our net position is unrestricted, 500000 So during the year, the following events occur and are recorded in our enterprise fund. We recognize revenues of 5250000 we recognize operating expenses other than depreciation of four million seven hundred fifty thousand. We record depreciation expense of one hundred and fifty thousand. We record the acquisition of nine hundred thousand in new capital assets. We record the issuance of eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars in long-term debt. We record the payment of one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in principal on long-term debt. And finally, we recognize that when we issued the new long-term debt, we made a covenant with bondholders where we promised, the enterprise fund promised, to set aside $100,000 of the bond proceeds to be used if needed for the payment of debt. Again, this promise was made to make the bonds more attractive to bondholders to let the enterprise get a better interest rate on the, on the debt. It's a very common covenant to include in bond documents. So we, it, we record the transfer, the purchase of restricted investments of $100,000 um, with a reduction of cash to recognize that we've set aside $100,000 as required in the covenant. So now that we've recorded all the events for the year, it's time to begin our closing process. The first thing we do is we close the temporary or income statement accounts to net position unrestricted. You may recall that in the general fund we, we closed all of the income accounts to unassigned fund balance. So in general we always close to the, the least restricted component of fund balance or net position. In this case we will close to unrestricted net position. So we close out revenues, operating expenses, and depreciation expense, which results in an increase in unrestricted net position of 350000 So if we were to generate our balance sheet at this time, before we had made any further adjustments, our balance sheet would look like this. Uh, everything in the asset and liabilities account is correct. Total net position is correct. But the net position count accounts are wrong. Net Investment in capital assets does not correspond to the book value of our capital assets and our long-term debt. Um, restricted debt service has not yet been adjusted to reflect the fact that we promised bondholders we would set aside or restrict an additional $100,000 of investments to protect them. So first we want to make our adjustment to net investment in capital assets. This is most easily done by creating a worksheet which accounts for all of the events during the year that may have resulted in a change in the balance of net investment and capital assets. So we added more capital assets of 900000 that increases the balance. We recognize $150,000 in depreciation that decreases the balance. We issued $850,000 in new debt that decreases the balance. And we paid $130,000 in principal on long-term debt that increases the balance. So the net change in net investment in capital assets is an increase of 30000 We make that adjustment with the entry shown here, which is to increase net investment in capital assets by 30000 And the offsetting entry, as I mentioned before, goes to net position unrestricted. So we increase net investment in capital assets and decrease net position unrestricted. Total net position remains unchanged. Next, we have to adjust restricted net position to recognize the restriction created by the covenant with the bondholders. So in this case, we added $100,000 of new restricted uh, net assets. So we increase 
net position restricted for debt service by 100,000 and we decrease net position unrestricted by 100,000. That's our offsetting entry. Total net position again remains unchanged. After the adjusting entry, our balance sheet would look like this. Now you see in this case, um, our assets and our liabilities are unchanged. Our net position is unchanged to in total, but the individual net position accounts have changed to reflect the adjustments we've made. Net, net investment in capital assets is now correct. It's equal to um, the book value of our capital assets plus the book value of our debt. And restricted net position for debt service is now 175000 which corresponds, again, to our restricted investments we see in the asset section. This is a process and an in, in a consideration that we'll be coming back to in the second half of the class when we deal with um, governmental or public colleges, universities, and hospitals. So uh, we'll be seeing this process again.